Hi all, Rebecca Von Hoff here. I'm councillor at Toowoomba Regional Council and it is fabulous to be here this afternoon with Graham. Graham is the owner of the definite article, Hip Pocket Rockets. Correct. And um, it's terrific to be here oh, and have good. a chat with you. Absolutely. Because community sport is really important for oh. the region. Oh, absolutely. Even especially in the strange times we're in now, I, yeah. I think it is really important. You know, it gives people a little or something to focus on, you know, and being a, being a high level quality uh, T20 cricket it is, you know, it's dragging people out. We saw that at Captain Cook on the weekend, the amount of people that were there who were, normally probably wouldn't come and watch local sport, but because of the way the world has been, it's given them opportunity to have an outlet. All right, I have to do full disclosure right off the bat <laughs> that um, I am a cricket purist. Yes. And for me, there is no greater pleasure than test cricket on one of the, like, <laughs> I'm going to sound like an, an elderly gentleman mm. here, but on a radio um, for the full days while I potter around. But I, I just felt like I needed to tell you well, that straight you'll off. You'll be interested in this. There's a little tradition that I have personally, I've developed it over the last 43 years of cricket mad passion, is that... Boxing Day is my one day of the year that I don't care who you are, ask my wife. I've told her this the moment we got together. I said, Boxing Day is my day. So the TV goes on, I have a packet of Doritos, I have a, I have a drink, and I'm watching cricket all day. Yeah. I do not care what anyone else in the world is doing, that's what I'm doing. Why cricket? What is it that, that just lights that fire in you? Well, it was a strange thing. Early on, I hated cricket mm. because we are, I come from Western Queensland, so the only TV channel we had was ABC. So I had about an hour of cartoons in the afternoon. That was all I had. And the test cricket was on, ain't no cartoons for Graham. Yep. So I was, because my dad would come home, shoes off, cricket off. So I got nothing. Mm. Um, but it, my, my real passion started once I got to boarding school. So I was in grade seven or 11 years old. I was away from home. Um, we had a lovely man who used to look after our cricket called Mr. Pickering. He, I, think he, I think he taught accounting when I was at school. And he just gathered, there was just, we all gravitated in him a bit and it all sort of started from there. Um, I was the world's worst cricketer when I was in grade seven. It took me a long time to get actually remotely decent at playing it. But, and then I just, Look, I spent the entire 1993 Ashes series sitting on a beanbag in the common room at Scott's PGC. I didn't do a lot of schoolwork for about three months because I was too tired because I was up watching, watching, it, watching Merv Hughes bowling yeah. on one knee. All right, so you um, are hip pocket workwear. Yes. But then to go into being an owner of a club, I feel like I'm an NBA watcher. Um, and I always I like to spot the, the club owners because it's an interesting aspect to the game. What made you go, I'm going to, I, I want to start this myself, I want to have a club, roll it? Oh look, it's a, it, it was a funny old thing. I, I come, I've been involved with Toowoomba Cricket for I guess about nine years. I think I didn't play cricket when I first got here but I started out, my, my first couple of games were with Metropolitan East and then end up playing at West and getting to know guys like Dan Gabbett and um, Lenny Vanderlinden and, and Rob and all those really mm. passionate guys. Um, and I really enjoyed it and it was great and seeing the, the guys who are really putting energy into building a club and making it something that was going to you know, stand the test of time. Um, and then my eldest daughter, Jamie Lee, she got a little bit older and all of a sudden she got an interest in cricket and started playing and um, a couple of years after that I ended up coaching um, junior girls cricket mm. and seeing the other side of it seeing with the volunteers and being very lucky that I had a lady called Fleur, Fleur Koch who was my manager and you know, she saved me many times, brilliant woman she is. Um, but what really got, the, got their interest in the Rockets is when uh, Kent and Tony came up with the concept to make it go is that Toowoomba Cricket has you know, it, it has struggled for numbers a little bit in the last few years, okay. um, just around people's commitments and cost and all those sorts of things. What the the DDBBL has brought is it's brought some excitement because here is high quality cricket happening once a year, leading up to the start of the season. Mm. It's been absolutely amazing. The players, junior and senior, that have come out of the woodwork to restart playing cricket, and that 
to me is why we that. got involved. I love that. Um, Look, really and honestly, Kent talked to me for about 12 seconds and I was saying yes. You know, I think I hung up and then rang him back and said, yeah, let's do it. Mm. Um, and we're, like, we're in our second year and um, it's just been fantastic. You know, mm. I've, you know, I've got to know even so many of the younger players who are playing with us. Um, I didn't realise that, you know, their dad shopped with us and those sorts of things. I didn't know it until such time I got to know these boys. and yeah. It's just great. I just love it. Your daughter mm. um, has cricket success yes yes now so. any chance interest future in a women's, women's Kent and I've actually talked uh, Kent, and Kent and I've talked about a WDDBBL and he's informed me that he can had, I just say that a WDDBBL yes yeah yeah, yeah swallow that mouthful yeah um, he's informed me that he's got all the instruction manual there he's happy to hand me the book anytime I'm ready to go uh, I think I need a few troops around me to do it um, Player numbers would be part of the key. I uh, don't know if we're quite there yet, but if you look at what Ruth and Ellie Johnson did on the weekend, the, they both they both hit big hundreds um, yeah. for the Ipswich Hornets, um, which Shane Lee was fortunate enough to be playing in that game and being witness to it all. You know, we are definitely building that core of um, players in the Darling Downs that I think it's something that can happen because the female players will come from from uh, from Brisbane and places to come play, which we're seeing with the men. I think it would be an absolute, absolute winner. Yeah, and from little things, big things grow. Absolutely. Uh, you could be, you could be, you could be the, the start. Yeah, uh, I've just got to see how Kent survives two, <laughs> year, two years before I see how much I've got to sign on for to do that. <laughs> We've had a few questions and I'm going to be cheeky hmm. um, and ask the first one about hmm. the amount of cloth required for you for your uniforms because there has been a little bit of a physical change in you. Yes, I, I, I did see that question. Thank you, Lenny. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> no, my shirt still cost me the same. I, I did ask that question saying I needed probably 20% less cloth, but no, I, I, um, it still cost me the same amount to get my playing gear. <laughs> Best coffee between here and Brisbane? Which is a really tough one. Um, um, no, no, there's one a bit further on the little service station. Um, they do quite a nice cup of coffee. Though. Is it the fruit shop? Yes. Do they really? Hmm. It's worth stopping. Huh. Okay. Yeah, they're quite surprising, some of those places. And are you a soy, skinny, no, flat? I'm a, I'm a flat white man. Yeah, I'm a flat white man too. But, but <laughs> no, no, the difference in coffee for me is you always tell, doesn't matter how old or young they are, male or female, pink, white or purple, it's the person who cares. Mm. You can see them when they hand you your coffee, they're like, here, mm. let me make it I when we, when we moved back from <laughs> Toronto, mm. um, we were in the airport and my husband and I, and, you know, had the little one and mm. um, I asked for a flat white and the, in the airport and the um, lady behind the counter set yelled out the order and she goes, two flatties. And I just had this moment of like, I'm back. I am back. Oh, I'm so happy to be back. <laughs> like, <sighs> so I'm going to ask about the weekend. Two yes. two runs in it. Yep. Uh, tell me about that that last that last Aging. over. Aging. So Clarkie and I exchanged a message um, first thing yesterday morning. Um, how are the grey hairs? Yeah. Because. DDBBL01, first game, we were playing the Libcube Lions, this is last year. We had to get three runs, four runs off the last ball to win the game. Troy Cooper pulls a ramp shot out of, out of a where somewhere, over his shoulder, hits a four, we win the game. Clarkie and I aged. We thought, cool, we've got that out of our system, away we go. This year, up, um, playing against the Knight Riders. We thought, cool, we only scored 100 and, 107. After nine overs, they were two for 57, and I'd gone, well, you know, they're going probably should round us up here. Sean McCarthy puts on a clinic with the ball, takes three for 15. He bowls the last over. They, need, they get it down to the point, they need three runs off the last ball. Mm. Sean bowls a dot, and everyone loses their mind again. And Paul Clarkie and I could do is look at each other and go, good God. <laughs> what do they say? Anything for a heartbeat. Oh, there was many heartbeats, although we nearly stopped a couple of times because that last, those last 11 overs just went up and down, up and down, mm. up and down. And, and, you know, I reckon I paced the hip pocket rock tent about 20 times. 
You know what you should do? You know the the pulse. Do, do you have a smart watch? Yes. You should. What's you the, should do? Watch oh, the, the pulse. heart rate monitor. Yeah. I didn't want to, because because we were going up and down like a yo-yo. It was, but it was good. I mean, this is what this is why we yeah, got involved. Mm. Because if we can put on those sort of quality games, I mean, people will come. I mean, you don't need you don't need game scoring two hundred runs each. We we had a we had a game that had what as a two hundred and twelve runs in it, and everyone was on the edge of their seats. Mm. And it's why we're in it. It's this is just so much fun. I mean, I went home and I was absolutely exhausted because oh, I was just trying to watch that and watch Jamie Lee's game on the live stream at the same mm. time, and and I just got home and dealer woke me up off the couch because I was. <laughs> yeah. What's the feeling between teams in the league? It's actually pretty social. Um, all of us have been very good at um, just giving each other a gentle hard time. Um, I know Jeff Mays from Rob Scan, he called us the hip, the hip pocket firecrackers, which I might say did come back to bite you, mate. <laughs> I love you, but a bitch in the backside this time. You, you'll get your back, it's fine. <laughs> but, you know, and, and, that's, and it's a good friendly rivalry, and that's what's making this 16 comp work is that there's no silliness, there's no mm -hmm. over-the-top sledging. Everyone just has a good time mm. and plays good cricket. Yep. And we're happily travel around, you know. This weekend we're going to be in... The, we're all down in Kale Park, down in Gatton. Mm. Um, we've got the 6 o'clock game. Um, I think we're up against the Valley Raptors, if my brain serves me correctly. And we're looking forward to that game because it's got um, a couple of our old team members in it. Um, and it just, it's just really enjoyable. We're going to all the different venues. So, you know, we're in Toowoomba at Captain Cook. You know, we're using the Highfield venue as well. So, so many people are getting the opportunity to come and watch. Yeah, and that's sportsmanship. And I yep, feel so. like at the moment as well, when there's a lot of tough parts of life, if you can have good sports that, you know, give everybody a lift, hmm. that's just great. Oh, and I think it's good for the and region as well. It I is, mean, and it's I not mean, to be underestimated. The the DDBVL is a very unique thing, so we're one of the first of its kind. So it's actually been very good for Toowoomba in general too, because it's making everyone look. Mm. So it, it actually helps. It's I, I believe it's helping the region as well, because once again, it's that on the map, showing mm. who we are and what we do. Um, and I that's what's best for really, which really ties in with my local community stuff. I love local community, and anything that make make more people look at Toowoomba, visit Toowoomba. You know, it's, it's great we can have these events when there are others that are being cancelled and aren't, aren't going to be on. Mm. At least it's showing that this, this stuff still can happen if we, if we can pull it together. Yeah, and people see other people out and about and, you know, they hear the sounds of the game yeah. and it's normal. Mm. And that gives them confidence that that's something that is part of life even in these circumstances. So. I think it's I think it's a great thing for community. Oh look, I just I just love it. I just, yeah. And of course, I love cricket. So you know, it's it's a no-brainer for me. I, I, I'll sit in that tent, and watch cricket balls all day, happily do it. Thank you for having a chat with me That's this afternoon. Right. Best of luck this weekend. Absolutely. Best of luck for the whole season. Absolutely. And uh, good luck to everybody, actually, because it's it's terrific what you're doing um, across the region. And that is Graham signing off. That is Rebecca signing off and thanks very much. Take care of each other and look after yourselves. <laughs>